This episode reveals the historical relationship between San Gabriel Valley gangs and the Mexican Mafia. The San Gabriel Valley is a vast consolidation of suburbs connected for several miles. Sangra, La Puente, Pomona, Bassett, El Monte, Lomas, and Azusa are neighborhoods with M.A. representation. The San Gabriel Valley has produced at least 20 members in the Mexican Mafia's history as a criminal organization. Located east of downtown L.A., Interstate 10 and the 60 Freeway are the principal arteries that extend through this region. In the course of criminal business, only the good Lord knows how many times these freeways have been accessed for the entry and getaway from multitudes of crime scenes. The first member of the San Gabriel Valley to become a made Mexican Mafia member was Victorio Juarez, a.k.a. Cupi from Sangra. He was recruited at San Quentin a few weeks after I was made, which means I participated in the vote to bring QP on board sometime in December of 1970. QP was born on July 28, 1942, was on the bus together with I in January 1970 from LACJ to Chino Guidance Center, rode the Grey Goose together to our CDC destinations in March. I went to Soledad, he continued to Quilmas, and I met up with him at San Quentin in September. QP would later be joined in La M by two of his brothers. Gilbert Juarez, known as Big Bunky from Sangra, was the oldest in age, born on July 15, 1937. The youngest of the three brothers was Steve, a.k.a. Little Bunky, who was born on June 10, 1946. These three men will be covered in a future upcoming episode on Mexican Mafia nepotism. I am aware of Cupi being shot to death sometime in the 1980s or so, and I believe a member of the Juarez family weighed in on perplexed news on the status of Big Bunky. No personal knowledge on the current status of Little Bunky. The brothers are shown here in very old booking mugshots. The next member from El Valle de San Graviel is Nick Velasquez, also known as Nico from La Puente. Nico was of Puerto Rican descent, born on January 3, 1944, and raised in the valley. Nico was recruited at San Quentin in the early part of 1971 with QP, a handful of carnales, and I voting thumbs up for his membership. Nico would navigate through nearly two decades of prison madness and performed at a high level at San Quentin, Folsom, and other prisons where opportunities arose to conduct business on behalf of the M.A. Despite Nico's ongoing loyalty and performance for the fellas, you must remember that your job description expects nothing less from a made member. Also, if you become notorious for being a home run hitter, using the baseball analogy, that becomes your defined standard. And if you fall short of customary expectations, the fellows will tend to look at you differently than others. There were many who could maintain that lofty pace, but there were those who fall short and become part of the internal propaganda machine waiting to be gobbled up by the sharks. On June 28, 1972, Nico teamed up with Aryan Brotherhood member Robert Griffin, also known as Blinky, in the stabbing murder of John Taylor. The fatal attack took place at the Sierra Conservation Center in Jamestown, California, inside the prison dorm. This was one of the dozens of joint missions carried out by these two prison gangs, who often worked together conducting mutual jailhouse business. Taking out common enemies, procuring weapons and drugs, sharing intel, and a multitude of networking actions have been shared by the M.A. and A.B. to this day, on the outside, in county jails, throughout the California and other state prison systems, and definitely in the federal prison system, where the numbers of members and associates of both groups are approaching those in the state of California. 
Nico paroled in the mid-1970s, continued to operate on the outside for his Emmett brothers, and was arrested for the November 3, 1977 shooting death of Mario Casas. His crime partner was a 20-year-old Sangra gang member named Angel Valencia. More on him later in this episode. As I've stated in other episodes, many guys in the gang underworld inherit nicknames. Some have a way of sticking with a guy. I could almost do a complete episode on temporary or long-term secondary handles many of the guys picked up. Keep in mind, where an outsider would not dare straddle one of the carnales with an unsavory handle, we could get away with it. For example, I got away with calling robot Natalie Wood. Memo from Pacoima was kangaroo. And I called Nico Quijada, Spanish for jaw, because as you can see, he had a protruding jaw. The fellas would tease Joe and call him peg leg. Topo was El Llorón, the crybaby. And I think you get the picture. In the gang underworld, whether with fellow homies or fellow Eme, such demeaning or unflattering names were part of the caula, Spanish slang for banter, and could be interpreted as a morbid affection. After Nico's first-degree murder conviction, he was sentenced to life in prison, and his tenure as an active member would continue for almost a decade. On May 17, 1988, Nico's Mexican Mafia criminal career came to a conclusion at the California Correctional Institution in Tehachapi when he was stabbed to death by his cell partner. There was internal MBS involved, and I also heard he had been seen reading the Bible and talking about the Lord. Once you're the target of their politics, they could bring up anything to get you hit. Nico was gone. Richard Jaramillo was also known as Richie from Pomona. Born in New Mexico and recruited at San Quentin in the early 1970s, he paroled in the mid-1970s and would never be heard from again. Although unconfirmed, someone said he had returned to his native New Mexico. Anthony Moreno was known as Dito from El Monte. Dito was recruited sometime in the mid-1970s and is shown here in these photos, including one with Richie and Gabby from Florencia 13. Dito paroled and ultimately fell from grace with the Eme. On April 22, 1995, Dito Moreno was executed by San Gabriel Valley gang members in the infamous Maxon Street murder case, which will be covered in a future Perplex News episode. Dito was 42 at the time of his death. Robert Zapata, who was not pictured, a.k.a. Fat Cat from Bassett Grande, was recruited in the early 1970s and was stabbed to death in the San Bernardino County Jail in 1972 in a confrontation with a Chino street gang member named Danny Losa. Danny would get convicted of this jailhouse murder, was sentenced to life in prison, and joined the Nuestra Familia prison gang, given refuge, and was embraced because he took out a rival MM member. As the saying goes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Charles Manriquez was known as Charlie Brown from El Monte. He was born on October 6, 1938, was recruited in San Quentin in the mid-1970s, and was active until he fell from grace with the fellas in the early 90s. Already discussed in other episodes, Charlie Brown was killed by La M on March 25, 1992 in the Big Hazard Ramona Gardens Projects by David Smilon Gallardo, an M member from Big Hazard. At the age of 53, CB was deemed completely dead weight to the fellas, had failed to comply with the prison task to take someone out, had already been stabbed in prison by Chuco Castro, and he managed to survive this attempt on his life without locking up. His final demise, his trip to Brazil, was put on the fast track when the fellas discovered he participated as a technical advisor in the Edward James Olmos movie American Me. Rather than delegate this hit to any Sureño, Smilon was the MM member who inherited this assignment. 
Remember, even though there was a Mexican Mafia rule solidly in place, prohibiting a non-member from touching a maid member, there were dozens of cases where the fellas went against this. Although it was a rule that was constantly violated with the members claiming ignorance, everyone knew what time it was. When a maid member becomes a bad apple, they don't care how he has to go. Angel Valencia is also known as Stump from Sangra and was born on November 25, 1956. Stump was Nico Velasquez's crime partner in a 1977 homicide, was convicted and sentenced to life. He was recruited in the late 1970s and served the Mexican Mafia faithfully for over two decades, navigating through the California prison system. He was exiled to Pelican Bay's long-term security housing units, and sometime after 2002, Stump became disenchanted with the game, used his brain, hung up his gloves, and hopped off that runaway truck with no brakes. I am glad to report he has dropped out of the Emmy and surely must be at peace with himself. I am very proud of this guy and his life isn't over, not by a long shot. Angel is 63 at this publishing and his parole day will come. I can still vividly recall the day the Pasadena Courthouse Sheriff's deputies mistakenly placed me in a holding cell with Angel and Nico. Nico dropped the ball that day. I was already easing a pencil from my legal folder thinking it was time to rumble. I did some fancy talking, made up some BS story, and 20 minutes later I was taken by the bailiffs bidding my farewells to Nico and Angel. I was angrier at the deputies than my concern about the close call. I'm glad they didn't move on me and the court bailiffs rescued my butt. The fellas had missed their opportunity to possibly silence me for good. The next three individuals were members of Pomona gangs beginning with Freddy Gonzalez, also known as Veneno, Spanish for poison, who was born on September 12, 1966. Veneno was recruited in the 1980s and was charged and convicted of the July 4, 1988 fatal stabbing of Nuestra Familia member Richard Dean, also known as Huero from Chiques. The order was issued by M.A. member Tupi Hernandez. Veneno later defected and testified in the first M.A. Rico trial. He is currently 53 years of age and serving a life sentence. Vincent Hurtado is also known as Chente from Pomona. Chente was made in the 1980s and was caught up in the 1985 and 1986 wave of sweeps throughout the California prison system, removing prison gang members to long-term segregation units. Chente eventually dropped out of the gang and his whereabouts is unknown. Mike Lerma is also known as Dogmouth from Pomona and was born on August 8, 1956. Mike was also made in the 1980s and is one of the most active members from the San Gabriel Valley. On May 23, 2018, widespread police raids consisting of local, state, and federal agents were conducted throughout Los Angeles pursuant to two federal racketeering indictments. The first, named Operation Dirty Thirds, targeted the Mexican Mafia's control over L.A. County jail drug and tax operations. A second RICO indictment charged Pomona Mike, who was already in custody, with control and extortion of drug proceeds in and around Pomona and from imprisoned inmates at Calipatria State Prison. In a nutshell, gang officers and people in the prison, jail, and street gang underworld consider Mike to be the godfather of Pomona, who rules his territories from his prison cell with an iron fist. Pomona Mike and other Mexican Mafia members in similar jail and prison confinements successfully engage the use of loyal crews to tax, oversee, and enforce on behalf of the big homies. At 63 years of age, Mike Lerma's so-called success story includes the enjoyment of the elevated status every gang member craves, reaching the goal of becoming a big homie, 
the unlimited amount of reaches he may never be able to really enjoy, and the long-term possibility of living the rest of his natural life in a prison cell. The following three Mexican Mafia members originated from the San Gabriel Valley gang of La Puente. Jose Padilla is known as Grumpy and was born on March 16, 1964. Grumpy was recruited in the 1980s and has disappeared from the radar. He would be 56 years of age if still alive. Jesse Gonzalez, a.k.a. Bird, has been in the California penal system since August 5, 1981 and is currently on death row awaiting the enforcement of the state's capital punishment for a first-degree murder conviction. He is 71 years of age. Rafael Gonzalez, no relation to Bird, is known as Cisco from Puente 13 and is a member of the Mexican Mafia's Pepsi generation. Recruited in the 1990s, Cisco was one of 68 defendants taken down on July 29, 2011, in a RICO racketeering indictment targeting Cisco and fellow Mexican Mafia member Armando Mando Moreno. They were charged with multiple drug conspiracies, fraud, gambling, kidnapping, and other federal counts. The utilization of Armenian power members, also known as AP-13, by Cisco and Mando to generate large sums of revenue from a variety of white-collar endeavors was easy pickings for these men. They were also charged with extorting members of the AP-13 gang. Cisco controlled Puente 13 as part of his Mexican Mafia inherited territory. Most Mexican Mafia members are generally considered the primary beneficiaries of their home turfs or the street gang areas they hail from. The relationship with the Armenians was so financially fruitful, Cisco and Mando even entertained the idea of sponsoring an AP-13 member into the M. It never came to pass, and Cisco and his younger brother, Cesar Blanco Gonzalez, were each sentenced to life in federal prison. The evidence presented at the trial showed that the Gonzalez brothers' racketeering activities brought them substantial amounts of cash, custom boats, and luxury cars. Think about it, people. You don't have to be a metal giant to make money in the drug business. After the big shots in Colombia from the Medellin and Kelly cartels were killed or taken down, one of their pilots summed it up in one sentence. After personally meeting Pablo Escobar, who was a giant moneymaker in the drug business, he said, quote, these guys are just a bunch of street thugs who got lucky, end quote. Getting lucky is one thing, but is this really what anyone would consider getting lucky? The lifespan of those in that world is short-lived, and the time is real. Randy Dale Therian is also known as Cowboy from Base Grande and was born on July 26, 1960. Because he was a very proficient money earner, Someone in the Mexican mob in the early 1990s got overly excited about recruiting Cowboy. He is one of only a handful of Mexican Mafia members to not be state raised. That means he did not go through the youth and adult penal system like almost everybody else. Cowboy was one of dozens indicted in the 1995 M.A. Rico racketeering case, was convicted and sentenced to life in federal prison. Almost immediately after arriving to the feds, he dropped out of the Emmy, became a born-again Christian, and today at 59 has made peace with his God. Victor Acuña is also known as Terco from Big Bassett and was born on August 5, 1966. Terco is 53 years of age, one of three Bassett Grande members to become Emmy, and will be eligible for parole when he turns 60. Luis Robert Maciel is also known as Pelón from El Monte Flores. He was born on June 5, 1969, and like Cowboy from Base Grande, was not state raised. At a hotel meeting, Mexican Mafia member Huero Shai from Artesia convinced the fellas that despite the books being closed, Pelón should be made. 
Pelon's first order of business was coordinating a hit on Diro Moreno, a member who had fallen from grace. On April 22, 1995, Diro was shot to death along with everyone in the house, including two infants, by Jimmy Palma, also known as Character from Sangra. Pelon and Character were convicted, given the death penalty, and on October 13, 1997, Character was stabbed to death on the death row exercise yard by Mexican Mafia members also on death row status. The murder of two infants was considered an unpardonable overkill and the Eme handed out their form of justice. Pelon saw the writing on the wall and asked for and received protective custody on death row. This meant he would never exercise on a yard with Eme members their associates, or anyone who would want to send him home earlier than what the law already had prescribed for him. At 50 years of age, he awaits his day of reckoning. Ulalio Martinez is the true name of Lalo from Lomas, who was born on September 12, 1961. In 1992, Lalo stabbed and wounded an L.A. County jail sheriff's deputy for disrespecting him. This was very inconsistent with MA unwritten rules against ta attacking law enforcement. On February 23, 2000, Lalo and MA member Alfie Sosa ordered a large-scale attack on over 100 black inmates by over 100 Sudeños on the Pelican Bay General Population Yard. When the smoke settled, one Sudeño was shot dead by a prison gun tower officer. On December 27, 2007, a Pasadena court judge ordered Lalo to stand trial for ordering the 1998 Rosemead contract murder of Pato Schubert. In September 2012, while awaiting trial for the murder charge, Lalo was charged with extortion after investigators tracked over $350,000 in monies generated from L.A. County Jail inmates in a one-year period. On June 22, 2013, Lalo Martinez was found dead in his cell from a heroin overdose. Lalo had a lifetime love affair with heroin, and in the end, where an adversary couldn't succeed, he was slayed by the Almighty Dragon, the master of his universe, the number one Mexican Mafia nemesis. Jock Padilla was also known as Jaco from Azusa and was born on April 17, 1964. Jaco was recruited by the M.A. in the late 1980s and was a longtime resident of Pelican Bay Security Housing Unit, where many of the fellows were essentially warehoused. From his high security cell, Jaco was the Mexican Mafia boss of his Azusa street gang and the surrounding territory. For several years, he would oversee street operations until one day he decided to turn his back on the mob. Jaco from Azusa dropped out, debriefed, and simply called it a day. Rumors have it he passed away while others insist he is in witness protection or sitting on an island with Elvis and Tupac. He may be a few kilometers from me for all I know. In the end, it doesn't matter because he jumped off the runaway truck with no brakes before it was too late. The San Gabriel Valley has produced at my count 20 Mexican Mafia members from this region located due east of downtown LA. Sangra has four representatives. Pomona and La Puente have also produced four members. El Monte and Bassett have three MM members from their neighborhoods. Lomas has one. And Azusa also has one member. God bless you guys and stay tuned for more to come.